A warm welcome to your Wabi Vista Gate News and News Update for Monday, April 11. Emergency repairs are ongoing at the Bell Pumping Station. Work crews, which have been on the job since Sunday morning, have been repairing critical infrastructure that was in danger of collapsing. Today, Prime Minister Mia Motley, Senior Minister Dr. William Dugid, and officials from the Ministry of Transport and Works got a first hand look at the work. Motley said the old infrastructure laid down more than a century ago had to be replaced without further delay. She appealed to Barbadians to be patient, noting that workmen had to do additional unexpected corrective work that added six hours to the job. One third of the country effectively relies on the Bell pumping station for their water supply. Work on phase two of the Fairchild Street Market Village project got underway today. The market will remain open during the construction process, expected to last four months. However, no vehicles will be granted access. Some vendors say they would have preferred more notice about today's start, but Joyan Haig of Haig's Communication, the PR firm for the project, told Barbados today notices were issued and steps have been taken to minimize the impact on vendors. Well, we were told this morning that some people were not aware. They were aware the project was starting, but they weren't aware of the date. We sent out the notices via the media, and we would have spoken to the markets department to share that information. And um, so we've asked them this morning that if they can continue to spread the word and to make sure that they cover everybody in the market if they need to know um, exactly what they need to know. We want them also with um, badges because they're going to be given identification cards that their vendors in the market are their workers so that we can be able to differentiate between who's a patron and who should be in here with a vehicle. But that's really about the pe- people coming with the vehicles. You've got to be able to identify yourself because we really don't want any traffic coming through here for safety reasons, of course. She urged the public to continue to patronize the vendors in the market. Um, unfortunately, yes, phase two may see some businesses being impacted, but what we've done to minimize the impact, as you can see, the entrance still remains open. It's closed to motorists, only if you're delivering, and if you're a vendor, you can drop off and, and come back out. But the public can still come through this entrance, we have people on site that will help navigate through the site because they actually don't want in the actual site. But as you can appreciate, vehicles will be coming in and out. And you can also make the uh, come into the market from the Charles Duncan O'Neill Bridge next to the bus terminal, walk down the steps, and uh, we encourage people to please come and support the vendors because we don't want them to lose any business as a result. But of course, with things with progress and sometimes with things uh, happening and moving forward is a level of inconvenience in order to have some convenience and that is basically what has happened with some. Barbadian born English cricketer Jofra Archer will be using his international profile to help Barbados promote road tennis. On Monday, Youth and Sports Minister Charles Griffith announced that the cricketer has agreed to be a goodwill ambassador for Barbados in road tennis. Griffith says Archer's role is part of government's plan to take the local game to the international stage. We are looking as much as possible to get road tennis into the Olympics at some point in time. And every single avenue that is available for us to utilize to promote it, not um, only in the region, but internationally, then we will do that. Um, So today is um, the start of a journey that we hope will be exceedingly fruitful. Uh, We know of his skills in in, in cricket. I am told that he is also fairly skilled in the art of of road tennis and we we hope that um, that will redound to us seeing road tennis um, in the UK in a meaningful way. We are doing what um, is necessary at the ministerial level as well. We are in contact with our mission in the UK to promote this. You will see road tennis being played in um, what we're terming, uh, what we're calling the the Bajan village, so to speak, for the Commonwealth Games. So we will have a presence in the UK at the Commonwealth Games, not in the games, but we are promoting road tennis at that level. Archer told reporters he's glad to see the development of the game and is happy to play his part to ensure that road tennis becomes popular. See that it's gone a bit further. My good friend there, he lives in he lives in my uh, neighborhood as well. And I think because of him, I probably started playing a bit more. So since the tournament the other day, I've played every week since then. You know, it, it becomes addictive. So 
So there's there's no reason why even when I do go back, cause there's still a few Barbadian guys where I live as well, you know, and there's no need. No, sorry, there's no reason why I wouldn't play it this summer in the UK, you know, and anyone that can see it and then show interest, cause then when they did put it on my story, a few guys asked a question or because um did you see the 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 documentary ish thing that Nike did? So the people that have asked me about it on my story, I just said that to them so they could get an understanding without me having to explain it myself really so yeah anything i can do to help you know it is for the betterment of a real tennis and now for today's covid19 update barbados recorded 211 new covid19 cases 80 males and 131 females on sunday on the 749 tests conducted by the best of santos public health laboratory the positive cases comprise 41 persons under the age of 18 and 117 who were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 101, while 2,621 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure oxygen, natural spring water, infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Morbi, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. On the international scene, the war in Ukraine and sanctions on Russia have sent global food prices soaring. It's feared costs will continue to climb if the fighting doesn't stop. Al Jazeera's Imran Khan reports from the Kiev region. Food warehouses burn to the ground in Ukraine. Supermarket shelves empty globally. The effect of Russia's war in Ukraine isn't just affecting people in the country, but around the world. Ukraine and Russia, between them, produce 53% of the world's sunflower oil and seeds and 27% of its wheat. To put that into perspective, if current supplies of sunflower oil run out, Belgium runs out of the ability to make French fries. If wheat supplies run low, Lebanon could run out of bread along with Egypt and Tunisia, and 27 African countries could face wheat shortages. With Russia under tough sanctions and its food exports severely restricted, and the war also stopping Ukrainian exports, businesses are under pressure. There are also crimes against Ukrainian agricultural production, different branches of the production. The biggest challenge that Ukrainian agrarians are facing is to plant the fields in time. 82,500 square kilometers of Ukrainian land is mined. This means we need much time for demining these lands. TAS Agro is a big agribusiness in Ukraine. Its director says it will be affected if the war doesn't end soon, but it is taking action. The situation with the war is changing constantly. However, we created so-called crisis teams and are preparing actively for sowing which starts soon. The war has destroyed agribusiness in the east of Ukraine and only fields in the south and west can be planted. But even then, forecasts indicate supply and labor shortages mean only half of those fertile fields will be cultivated. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. <laughs>